Layer styles have been crucial in the creation of Times Square because layer styles allow you to create a lot of effects that would normally take a lot of steps to create. I'm going to zoom in on the central area of Times Square here, and we'll look at some bottles up there in the edges of Times Square. I'm going to show you how it was so important to use layer styles to create that effect. So here, we have a blank file, and I have a path for the shape of the bottle. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a nice color, and we're going to say that this is a nice apple cider, so I'll pick a orangey color about like that. Here's a nice color for our cider. Let's make it a little deeper. There we go. This will be a nice clear cider. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to create a layer, which I'm going to call bottle. Right there. I'm going to fill that path with that color. There's this nice orangey color. Now, I want to start to give this bottle some dimension. Now, I want to bring up a very important point here. Look at the layer styles. I'm about to apply a layer style. Look at the layer styles. They all have names. See, color overlay, inner glow, inner shadow. But you see all the controls they give you? Same thing with the filters. Look at the filters. They all have very specific names. One thing that's important to note is that you should forget what those names are. Those names will stop you from really stretching out what you can do in Photoshop. Something like motion blur. Well, it makes a little blur that makes things look like they're moving. But what is it really doing is it stretches the things so it can be used for so many things like reflections in water and so many other effects that would normally take other steps to create. It's very important to study what something is doing because a little change here in the mode, a little change there in the color will totally change the effect that that layer style or filter is producing. And it could be the solution that you've been looking for for that little problem that's plaguing you in your personal work or your job. So I'm going to go in here and I need a dark tone all along the edges of this bottle. So I'm going to go to my layer styles and the one that automatically comes to mind, of course, is the inner shadow. But the inner shadow, as you can see, is producing the dark tone on one side. It's not equal all the way around. So that's not the one. That's not what I need. What layer style gives me the tone on all sides? The one that does that is inner glow. Now it's called glow, but that's okay because when you click on it, you notice you have all these controls. So what I want to do now is I want to go in here and take that color and I want to change it to a warm version of this color here. So I'm going to go in here and just make this nice deep orange like that right there. And make it a little bigger. Now, we're not seeing it. Why? Because being the glow, it's set to screen. And screen means that any color that's lighter than the ones beneath should be seen, and anything darker will be hidden. This orange is much darker than our original tone, so it's not visible. So by changing the mode to that of a shadow, which is multiply, there's my dark tone, see? So now it's become an inner shadow that's equal on all sides. So now I can go in there and make this even bigger. So I have this nice dark tone, amber color along the entire edge. That's what I wanted. So I click OK. Now I want a darker tone right along the edge here, an even darker brown, right along the edge to make my bottle look even thicker and more dimensional. Now I can add only one layer style of inner glow. Inner glow is what I need again, but with a darker tone. There's always two ways or three ways of doing the same thing in Photoshop, but sometimes one way is more efficient than others. If I was to take this bottle and duplicate it, and then this one I would go in there and say, take the fill opacity down to zero, and then change that inner glow color to something else. But right there, what I've done is I've increased the size of this file by having two layers with two layer styles. So that's not a very efficient way of doing it. If your files are really huge, that could really make a difference. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take this inner glow and take it out of the layer style. I come over here to layer, go down to layer style, and go way down here to create layer, and click on that, and you'll notice that the inner glow has now been separated out of the layer into its own layer, keeping the file size relatively small. I can now go back to the bottle and double click on it, giving me the ability to give it another inner glow. Now, this is one layer with a layer style and a second layer, which is far more efficient than two layers with two layer styles. So here, with the second layer, I'm going to go change this to a deep brown, really deep brown like that, change the mode to multiply, and then increase the size so I have that nice tone along the edges, just like that. Click OK, and there we have the effect that I wanted. So now, I'm going to do a few more things to this. For one thing, I'm going to turn off my background, and I'm going to hold on my Option key, Alt on a PC, and say Merge Visible. 
So I created this other bottle on top here, which this bottle, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go to my Q saturation. I'm going to bring down the saturation, uh, make it much lighter, about like that. And then I'm going to create a little mask around. I'm going to take my pen tool. I'm going to draw a little arc right through there like that and surround the whole top portion of this and then turn that path into a selection. And while it's selected, I go to my layers and I say to that layer, give it a mask based on the selection. And there we see that now we have the top portion of the bottle where there is no liquid. We just took this bottle of cider out of the refrigerator so it's nice and moist. So I'm going to add some moisture to this. So I'm going to layer on top of the whole thing. I'm going to get white from my color. I'm going to get my paintbrush, which right now is set to a hard edge brush. There it is. Hardness is at 100%. And I have some settings for it. I went into Shape Dynamics where I set it up so that my size is a jitter and I have a minimum size set up. And then I have some scattering set up as well, so it's kind of jumping around. Right, so now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start to paint all these little drops all over my little bottle, like so. All different size drops of water right on the bottle. Now, they don't look like drops of water, they look like little white dots. So, using layer styles, we're going to turn that into real moisture. Let's get a little closer so we can see what's going to happen next. I'm going to double click on it, and water, even though it's transparent, it does cast a shadow, so I'm going to give it a little drop shadow. I'm going to bring the distance in a little bit so that it's a little closer to the edge and bring down the opacity. Just a hint of a drop shadow. I'm also going to add an inner shadow, which I'm going to make it a little smaller right there. And I also don't want to add black to the color underneath. What I want to do is just darken the color underneath. So I'm going to change the mode. Instead of multiply, I'm going to set it to overlay. Now, we don't see the effect. Why? Because it's affecting the color underneath. So to see the color underneath, I'm going to go over to my blending options right here, where I have two opacities, opacity and fill opacity, which I also have here in my layers panel. Now the opacity deals with the entire layer. Bringing this down, you see the layers becoming transparent. Bringing it down to zero, the layer completely disappeared. Now, fill opacity deals with the original pixels that I generated, these white dots. The new pixels that were generated to do the drop shadow and the inner shadow, they will remain visible because the opacity will remain at 100%. By bringing the fill opacity down to zero, the white dots will disappear. There you go. Now we're seeing the effect of the overlay drop, inner shadow, and so on. Now to make this look like water, I'm going to give it one more layer style of bevel and emboss, where I'm going to bring up the depth so I get really strong tones. I'm going to soften them up a little bit. I'm going to bring up the opacity on my white so I get really nice highlight right there like that. Now this bottom part, the shadow area, well, that's not quite the way I want it. Let's make this a little smaller. There is no shadow in there. The water acts like a little magnifying glass saturating the color underneath. Black is not going to saturate, so I'm going to change that color to a white. White will saturate. Now it disappeared. Why? Because of the fact that it's set to multiply the mode for a shadow. By changing this to color dodge, there I have the intensifying of the color underneath. I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little. Click OK. And now a couple of final touches. We just brought this out of the refrigerator. So maybe with my smudge tool, I'll kind of push this one up like that so it looks like it's dripping. And then this one over here is just starting to drip like that. And this one is dripping. And maybe this one over here is dripping as well. So you can see how we've created the full effects of the three-dimensional bottle, giving it the tones and giving it the moisture by some basic shapes that were given layer styles to complete the scene.